Hi guys, Fred here. Welcome back, AF Math and Engineering. And we are going to take a look at uh, how to analyze over-reinforced re uh, reinforced concrete beams. So we'll take a look at this question here. And just a quick uh, note before we start is that usually over-reinforced concrete beams are not... Uh, over-reinforced concrete beams are usually not designed for because the um, the w what you see that will happen with over-reinforced beams is that the concrete at the upper part of the beam will fail, will reach its maximum strain before the steel yields. And what that will cause is a, a catastrophic immediate failure of the beam rather than a slow um, yielding failure that you get from an under-reinforced beam. So, um, but <clears throat> regardless, you do have to learn this. So um, we're going to just do one question here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, approach this. So uh, what we have here is we have a beam. We have 10 25M bars. Okay. And we're given all the properties of the concrete and the steel here. And we're asked to verify if the beam is over-reinforced. And if it is, to find the factor of moment resistance. So the first thing that we're going to do, that we're going to start, is we're going to start with the assumption that the beam is balanced. Okay. So if you don't know what I mean by a uh, balanced condition, uh, take a look in the description. And I'll link you to the, um, a video that I made before that shows the different failure modes of reinforced concrete. Okay, so a little bit of background is uh, needed for this question. So take a look at that if you don't understand what I mean. So uh, in the balance condition, okay, the, this, the yield strain in the steel is reached at the same time as the, um, the concrete strain, okay? So let me draw you a little picture just before we begin. Okay, so we have our steel here, okay? And what we have is we have a stress uh, strain distribution here and at the top fiber, okay, we have our EC max, our epsilon max, okay? And this is what the balance condition looks like, okay? So the balance condition looks like this, okay? Where we have the, our yield strain is equal to the actual strain in the steel, and that's 0 0.002 in this case, okay? And this number is arrived at by dividing the Fy, which is the yield stress by the modulus elasticity. So, in an over-reinforced beam, okay, the, the, the concrete still reaches its maximum strain, but what we see, okay, is we see, and this dotted line is going to show you what an over-reinforced beam looks like, okay, this distance here, okay, is our ES and it's less than epsilon Y, okay? So this, is, this dotted line here is what the strain diagram looks like in an over-reinforced situation. So, <clears throat> that's just a little bit of background to get started. So let's uh, begin with the question itself. And let's remember what we need to do first. Okay, so what we need to do first is we need to uh, consider it to be balanced, and then we need to find the strain in the steel. And we need to check if it's close to the yield strain. So let's go ahead and start that. In a balanced condition, we make the assumption that the tensional uh, force is equal to the compressional force. Okay, and we know that TR is equal to phi S F Y A S. Okay. And uh, AS, okay, we have uh, 10 25M bars, okay? And we know that 25M bars are 500 millimeters, okay? So we have, uh, we have 10 of them, that's 5,000 millimeters squared, okay? So that's AS. Uh, we have Phi S, that's 0 0.85, and we have uh, FY, that's 400. So let's go ahead and find the tensional force, okay? And we're going to arrive at a value of 1,700 kilonewtons. Perfect. So um, using this equilibrium equation that we used <clears throat> when we assumed that it was balanced, okay, and I'm just going to show you what this derivation looks like, okay, but you're going to have TR equals CR, okay, and we know what CR is. CR is alpha 1, okay, and if we equate those, okay, we're going to have TR equals alpha 1 phi C F prime C A B. Okay, so if we go ahead and we solve for A, that we need A in order to find the uh, value of C, which is what we need to find the strain, verify whether or not the beam is over-reinforced or in a balanced condition. Okay, so if we come down here, we're, we're going to isolate for A in this equation here, and we should get TR over alpha 1 phi C F prime C B. Okay, and we have all these values. This is our B value here. Okay, F prime C is given. And alpha 1, for this question, we're just going to assume that it's uh, 0.8. Okay, so there's a formula for alpha 1. Let's make sure we get our units correct. Okay, we have 0 0.8, 0 0.65, F prime C is 25, 
and b is 400, okay? That means that our value of a is going to be 327 millimeters, okay? And if we know that the formula for c is simply a over beta 1, okay, where beta 1 we're going to assume to be 0 0.9 in this question. We have 327 over 0 0.9. So c is equal to 363 millimeters. Okay, and that is this distance here. Okay, so we have the distance to the neutral axis in the balance condition. Okay, that is C. Now, what do we do here? Well, we can use similar triangles, okay? Because we have a triangle here of height E C ma epsilon C max and base of C. Okay, and we want to find what uh, epsilon S is here, okay? What that corresponds to. And we're going to go ahead and do that by simply using this formula. Okay, so uh, don't worry too much about the derivation of this formula particularly. You can do it just using the triangles, working it out, but if you just remember this formula, you should be on a formula sheet or a cheat sheet. Just plug it into this and you, it gives you uh, epsilon s right away. So that's what we're looking for. We're gonna, we want epsilon s. So let's come over here now. Okay, so we have epsilon c max over c. So this triangle okay, equals epsilon c max plus or epsilon s over d. Okay. So this plus this over the whole distance. And what we're going to do is solve for epsilon s, okay? So if we go ahead and plug in values here. And where d is the effective depth. Okay, we're going to get a value for e at epsilon s, if you just go ahead and uh, work that out. Epsilon s is 0 0.00036, so a very small value, right? So what we need to do is we need to compare this value here to epsilon y the yield strain. And how do we find the yield strain of a steel? Simply, uh, our, it's yield stress divided by the modulus of elasticity of the material. Okay, so, come down over here. Okay, the yield strain is equal to uh, Fy over modulus of elasticity, that's 400 over 200,000, and that is simply 0 0.002. Okay, okay so, um, if a beam is over-reinforced, if, okay, if, we have this condition where epsilon s, so the strain, the actual strain in the steel is less than the yield strain, which is equal to the yield stress over the modulus of elasticity. Okay, so if this condition is fulfilled, the beam is over reinforced. And it is in this case, if, if it's very close, if it's like 0 0.0019 or something, that's fine. You can consider them to be equal, but this is much smaller than this value. So the assumption that we made that this beam is in a balanced condition that the, the steel is under is the same as the strain that the concrete is under is incorrect. Okay, so this assumption was wrong. So we can't use the value of uh, A for the compressional stress block here. So what we're going to need to do is we're just going to have to evaluate the beam again as a, we're going to have to evaluate the beam as an over-reinforced beam. And that's pretty straightforward actually. So, so I'm just going to write here over reinforced. So what do we need to do now? Well, we can't use these values anymore. We can use this formula. Okay, so just remember this formula, write it down in your formula sheet. Uh, you'll probably get it on the, if you, have a, if you have a formula sheet, this will probably be on there. But remember, the steps here are assume that uh, it's balanced, check the strain. If the strain in the steel is much less than the yield strain, just go ahead and uh, use this formula and analyze it as an over-reinforced beam. So we have alpha one times phi C times F prime C, that's all times B divided by epsilon C max times phi S times the modulus elasticity times area of steel. If you're really interested in um, the derivation of this, I mean, you can just look it up. I'm not, uh, I'm not really gonna go into that too much. That's gonna be times a squared. And what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have a quadratic equation. Okay, so we're going to use this new equation here in order to solve for a. Okay, so what you do is you just plug in all of these values, rearrange so that it's a quadratic formula, put it in your calculator, and you should get that the root that you wanna use for a is 250 millimeters, okay? So what we're gonna to wanna to do here, okay, we're continuing, we found the actual compression block uh, depth. Now we just go ahead and find C exactly the way that we did it before. Okay, so we're going to take C and we're going to, we're, we're going to take A and divide it by beta one. That's going to give us roughly 280 millimeters, okay? 
Okay, we're going to apply this formula here that we applied before in order to solve for the, uh, the strain in the steel. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have 0 0.035 epsilon C max over C. C is 280. Okay, And we need to solve for epsilon S. Effective depth is 400. And we should get epsilon S if you solve for this. Okay, this is uh, 0 0.0015. Okay, that's good. So now, the uh, the important thing to note here, and this is um, this is kind of an understanding thing, and if you can get this, it's much better for you. Um, but the thing to understand here, okay, is that we need to now calculate the stress in the steel. Okay, so we need to find Fs because we want to find the um, the tensional force in the steel. However. Okay, if we take a look at our stress strain diagram where we have stress and strain, okay, when we look here, okay, we have a point here at which the modulus, so this is the modulus elasticity, it's the slope of the linear portion of the curve, okay, and that is um, this point here, okay, corresponds to epsilon y, all right, and okay, and, and anywhere in this area, okay, we have elastic behavior of the beam. So in an over-reinforced beam, we're in the uh, we're in still the linear portion of the stress-strain curve. So that's the relationship. So we know that the modulus elasticity is equal to stress over strain. So in order to find the stress in the steel, since we know that our strain is less than the yield strain, we know that we're in the linear portion of the stress-strain curve, that we need to use this relationship. So we're going to say that this sigma that I wrote is the stress, right? That that's the stress in the steel, and we're going to call that Fs. Okay, so Fs is simply the modulus elasticity of the steel times the strain in the steel, okay? And that's equal to 200,000 times 0 0.0015. Perfect. And that is going to be equal to 300 MPa. Perfect. Now, what's left to do? Well, now we can solve for the tensional force, okay? We have Tr, which is uh, phi S... And instead of using Fy, okay, we're going to use Fs, because that's the, the stress in the steel, times As, and that's just going to simply be 0 0.85 times 300, the value above, times 5,000, steel is the same area. And now we have that the tensional force in the steel, okay, Tr is 1275 kilonewton. Perfect. Now, as we know, Okay, so we have our equation for the moment resistance, of an, and that's just the same if it's over-reinforced or not. And finally, we are going to get, if we plug in values here, okay, we're going to get a moment resistance of this beam of 350 kilonewton meters. Perfect. So I know it got a little messy. Sorry I ran out of room. But uh, I hope that helps. I hope uh, you learned something there and got just a little more understanding because if you really understand what's going on in these problems, it's going to help you in the exam and in the long run too. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe.